wrote a lot of uh, Colonel Parker's interviews at one time and you advised him on them. Is there any other wrestlers you did that with? I helped him. I helped um, helped the Harlem Heat out quite a bit in their interviews, stuff like that. And anyone else that would needed help or ask for help, no. But mainly those guys, because you know, after coming out of the WWF, I did learn some things. And I learned what we weren't doing right in WCW. And that was being, you know, prepared sometimes. So with Colonel Robert, he was, he was, um, he was my, my idea. So I wanted him to look good. So I helped him with some of his ideas and some of his interviews and things like that because you know, I wanted to show that I could do that. And by doing that, I actually, uh, I could have had a lot larger part if I wanted, but I was in the office with Ole when he was in and also Bill Watts. Unfortunately, Bill Watts got fired before I got back in full time. But uh, you know, Bill asked me to be a part of the booking committee. And oh then, wow! Yeah, so I was, you know, I was, I spent as much time as I could in the office, and would come up with ideas. Actually, uh, that's how I got Colonel Parker and uh, the Harlem Heat hired. I, I, I portrayed that those characters in front of uh, Ole, Dusty, and Jim Barnett, and then uh, Jim Barnett and Dusty, and I think the, uh, Ole, their concerns were if, if if Robert could do the character as well as I was doing it. No. Right, that was their original game. They were Cole and something, and they came out in chains, right? And he was like the. It, well, I guess it was similar well, to a Southern. Well, this is what the whole idea was that Carl Parker was supposed to be, um, you know, um, this big flamboyant person. And, and, and how they, he got with the Harlem Heat was that, you know, at that particular time, the governor of Louisiana was a big time gambler. This is a, real, a shoot. And he always owed a lot of money to, you know, a lot of different things. He lost a lot of money in horse racing and stuff like that. So we came up, well, I came up with a little story that, you know, during a. I bet that he lost a lot of money to Colonel Parker and Colonel Parker instead of wanting the money says you know hey I, I, I proved myself being the greatest manager in wrestling because I brought Sid Vicious in but I want to prove it with two people that were nobodies so I want two people off death row and that's why we brought him in in like the jean shirts and the, the jean pants and they had those numbers on like they were out of just coming out of prison and, and the thing about Stevie he actually had some really bad scars on his back, on his shoulder. And I wanted to use that to our advantage and say that that's where, you know, during prison, that the man beat him, the man being the guy in charge. And that was the whole reason yeah, for the, uh, Booker was in prison for real, right, at one point. Was he? I, I believe. Uh, he could have yeah. been. I didn't he's know turned, that. He's turned his life around and now he's a huge humanitarian. But yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. But the main thing was this is that, you know, Stevie then really looked at. It. And this is the thing is, too, I had, was being taught this in the business. Of, you know, we didn't have a real, you know, they'd have a strap match usually to get out of a angle or something like that. So I said, I, we as well start the strap match from the beginning. And these two guys, you know, have been in jail for the last, you know, how many years being strapped by the man. Now they're going to get their revenge on the man. They're going to strap everybody they see. Meaning that what would happen is that they were strapping other people and, you know, working the WCW at that particular time, you know, Steiner's being, you know, one of the top tag team, you're going to work with them or the Road Warriors or somebody like that. So at least when you got to a point like that, you could have a real gimmick match because these guys had been strapping people for some time. But um, Dusty didn't like it because that wasn't his idea from my understanding. And the uh, candidate said it was too racial. Uh, now, to me, how can that be racial? These are two black guys strapping white people. You know, um, and so then... Uh, just a little bit not an argument just a battle of words between me and Dusty where he wanted to call him Chi-Town Heat or something like that and I said well they I wanted to call him The Posse but a movie had just came out called The Posse I didn't want to copy that in hindsight I wish I would have that would have been a better name for him yeah. and it's nothing wrong by copying people and I just didn't know that at the time. So I said, we'll call them the Harlem Hellraisers. They were billing themselves already from Harlem. So uh, in, in bickering back and forth, I just I succumbed to Harlem Heat versus he was going to call them Chi Town. He pretty much that was the Road Warriors deal. You know, I said, this, that's the Road Warriors. You know, so this is calm. They, I said, they've been building themselves some Harlem, so this is calm, Harlem Heat.